when you're responsible for somebody's safety and also in a work environment. Let's talk about that. I mean, you're responsible. I own a business. I have employees. I'm responsible for the work they put out. I'm responsible for what they say to a customer. I'm responsible for their, uh, what they do. And on occasion, I have had to lay down the law. I do it a little different than most people might, but the point is, the point gets across, and you know, that's uh, unfortunately a position that I've been put in. Control droplets are initiated through words, action, thoughts, and deeds. Obviously, those are what we're talking about here, thoughts and actions initiate all control dramas. Uh, you can also have conscious control dramas. I mean, how many people have had negative thoughts towards somebody but never really did anything physically or took any action? Okay. Uh, if you believe in thought transmission, then uh, you are impacting them. Um, doesn't necessarily you mean you're causing them physical harm but you're starting a control drama which then they might feel and react to. Okay, And that reaction can escalate into greater issues. Okay, poor me and subconscious manifestation of accidents and attention and control. Uh, the poor me, I've seen this, not firsthand, but through other people's experiences where people have actually manifested an accident so that they can be in the hospital and control the family. Because they don't have control without playing the poor me. That's the only way they can manage to manipulate their family. Okay, so that's unfortunately what happens to chronic poor me's. They're constantly manifesting uh, devastating experience in their lives so they can draw energy from the rest of their friends and family. Okay, the primary control drama, however, is the intimidator. As we could all imagine, I mean, you can see the stuff going around the world. I mean, governments don't play nice together, and most, uh, and what I see, most people don't play nice together. <laughs> um, these conditions can be chronic. We know all know people who are chronic intimidators, chronic poor me's. The interrogator and the loof are a little more, are a little less popular because they're not as powerful. I mean, these ones really get your attention. Okay, and so you have chronic conditions where people do that 24 hours a day or 10 hours a day is enough. <laughs> it's more than enough. All right, then you have also the situation where there's a chameleon. All right, and I've seen this. I've seen people go through every four control dramas in a five minute period because it's not working. And so they're switching. And we'll talk about how to break control dramas in the, in the process of what happens in a control drama in a little bit. So that's the chameleon. Let's start with how we learn control dramas. All right, let's talk about as we're born. And unfortunately, one of the concepts throughout society has been, uh, you know, get these kids ramped up as soon as possible, make them mature. Okay? And one of the concepts with that is isolate them from the parents. So a kid's born, you know, as soon as possible, they put them in a crib, put them in the other room. Okay, now that has been historically the most common way of raising children. All right, here's a child who's been nine months in the womb in the perfect comfort and energy, soothing environment, and pretty soon he's out in the real world and he's all shocked and no wonder they cry pretty much as they're born. Like, yeah, put me back in, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so then uh, he's used to having a constant flow of energy and comfort and love. All right, and we, I, we separate them from that, and some people now, I've seen, I've heard a lot of stories about people now who are having a crib next to the bed and, and doing all these transitional steps, and that's wonderful. And they're, they're, they're having very much, I would say, uh, more adjusted children from what I've seen. But when you separate the child and he has a need, uh, whether it be he feels depleted, uh, the child doesn't feel uh, the energy, he uh, hungry, or any discomfort, um, the only thing he has is the vocal presence of crying. So a child learns very quickly that crying induces a response. Okay? So crying, oh, I get what I want. Cry, get what I want. Good, this works. You know, kids don't have to, have to be having a conversation with us to know how the system works because they're operating on an energy level from the time they're born. All right, so what happens? What are the parents doing when they're getting up at 5 in the morning every night, or, you know, 2 in the morning, they're getting up three times a night, and they go to work saying, oh, woe is me. Uh, 
child kept me up all night. There you go. Intimidator, poor me. All right? So the child is an intimidator almost from birth. All right? And then you go on to a little older in age. You got the, the spoon throwing on the floor issue. Okay? He says, oh, this is cool. I drop, they pick up. Oh, wow. What power is this, you know? So what happens? I mean, the, the parent gets trapped in all these issues. Um, parent didn't get anything done because they're dealing with all the things that the child is doing to distract them. They didn't get what they wanted done in, in the day, so they're complaining. So they become the poor me again. Now, I mean, there's many different ways of dealing with those issues. If you haven't, if you, if you aren't harnessing this energy to start with, uh, you know, the kid's going to be probably a crier and intimidator right out of the womb. Um, and, you know, there's always the concept, well, don't pick up the spoon every time. Make him eat with his fingers once in a while. You know, kids get the picture. Like, I don't want to do that, so I, I'll, I won't throw my spoon on the floor. All right, so then you've got other issues. You've got, uh, um, as the child grows, uh, you've got the fighting for toys. Again, learning how to control. Um, then you have the children, and we've all seen this, a child that you know, is with his mother or something and hiding behind their dress or hiding behind their father's legs and looking out like this. Okay, you've seen those, right? What do people do? Honey, can I get you something? Is there anything you need? Hi, how are you? Okay, child becoming aloof. The people around him become inter interrogators. Okay, now, the interesting part of all this is that we uh, are learning these control dramas from our parents. Okay? So, and a parent, parent was an intimidator, or a parent became a poor me because we, we learned that intimidation worked, but in contrast, uh, as we grow, we're continually learning our parents' patterns. So, children are only reacting to what they're experiencing in the house. All right. Now, ironically, you will find that in most relationships, the mother or the father is one of these. And they use both control dramas, but they rely on one. There's always a primary control drama that everybody relies on. So, what uh, the child will do is whatever one they master is the parent they're closer to. So whatever parent you're closer to, if you can see their control drama, you'll be able to see the control drama that you learn to rely on. And that's closer because what you did is you manipulated the other parent by using their control drama. I mean, I've seen it time and time again where children take on the position of their parent. Once you know, the parent's out of the picture or either not, they just both do it to the same spouse. They're both playing the same control drama. Because they haven't learned any different but to take energy from other people. Okay, now uh, you go up a little bit and you get into teen years. And let's say the, the, it's a girl and she's uh, you know, the most popular kid in school. Well, now all of a sudden she's got all sorts of power she can wield. Okay, she says, okay, you want to hang out with me, then you have to do things. Okay? They're learning how to use this power. And then you got, the, say, the boy that he's the first one to get a car in his, in his group. Oh, wow. You know, now the kids are saying, oh, can you drive me somewhere? Pretty soon he's like, well, yeah, but you got to pay for gas. Okay? Um, and so if kids are using, and, and, you know, the kid says, oh, I don't have money for gas. He's poor me. And this kid says, well, pff, you know, you're not going anywhere if you don't pay for gas. <laughs> All right? So you can see how this evolves very quickly. And it all starts from birth. So it's no wonder that we relied on control dramas our entire life. And it's a challenge, or not necessarily comfortable, to live without them. 